We're speaking with Warwick Bartlett, who's uh, visiting from the UK here at the Global Gaming Show. Warwick, uh, how long have you been involved in the gaming industry? Oh, about 50 years too long. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you been coming to this convention? Uh, this is only my second visit, believe it or not. Is that right? Yeah. But you come here as an expert, you're a speaker? Yes, uh, I gave a presentation on European internet gambling. Uh, how has uh, internet gambling affected the uh, traditional bookmaker, the, the, the high street bookmaker and rails bookmaker? Oh, that's a big question. I think um, probably taken about 30% of revenue away from the high street. So. Each of the high street bookmakers in the UK now has an online presence. Um, but internet gambling in the UK represents about 30% of the total gambling. One third, roughly? Yeah, about a third. Uh, how about telephone? Is telephone still popular? Or no, that, no everybody, everybody uses the internet because there's so much more information available. You know, you look on and say on Monday morning, a lot of these bookmakers are pricing up thousands of markets and sub-markets. So there's so, so many betting opportunities and so much information that is available. Uh, how much of the uh, traditional betting shop is now internet casino business? Yeah, well, um, when the government introduced a different tax rate, so they were taxing on on what the customer loses rather than the handle. Mm -hmm. um, that gave opportunity for mach the machines that were already in the shops mm -hmm. uh, to play roulette where the payout is high. Mm -hmm. And they're very, very popular with the customers. And they represent probably about 60% of net revenue now. What effect will uh, the uh, experience, the British experience, by the way, how popular is uh, internet gambling in the UK relative to the rest of Europe? Ah, well, if you had up the gross gaming revenue for the whole of Europe, uh, 27, 26 countries, so, mm. uh, it would just about equal the amount of gambling that's taking place in the United Kingdom on internet. Uh, and and why do you, uh, what do you attribute it to? Uh, well, the UK was a very early adopter of mm -hmm. internet gambling. Mm -hmm. UK benefits from its time zone uh, with Greenwich Mean Time. It means you can trade east and west in the same day. Mm -hmm. So from a transactional point of view, it's a very good place to locate mm -hmm. your offices. Um, a, the tax rate of 15% of gross profits has been the real engine for growth. And in the UK, there's a lot of expertise on how to run gambling businesses. And therefore, they've been able to sell that to the rest of the world. Uh, there's a debate in the US now about legalizing sports betting. But sports betting has been a popular part of British culture for how long? Well, probably three centuries. Uh, betting on horse racing originally. Yeah. Uh, it was legalized, completely legalized in 1961. So there's a long history there. Yeah. Uh, the British are bemused as to why it is not legal in the US because the great benefit in the United Kingdom is that there is no illegal gambling, none at all. Uh, it's better to legalize it, tax it. Uh, it eliminates uh, fraud and um, malpractice in the sports mm -hmm. because you have a complete audit trial of every transaction mm -hmm. uh, and the United States would benefit from this. What about the propensity for match fixing? Well it reduces because um, most of the match fixing that takes place now originates from the illegal areas such as Asia. Oh. Um, and the British bookmakers have uh, f formed uh, an organization called ESSA where they pool information. Mm -hmm. So there's an alert system mm -hmm. when they feel that matches are corrupted and then they alert in turn the uh, sports governing bodies. What do you think the prospects for eSports betting 
or betting on uh, video game competitions? Well, there's a lot of buzz about that at this conference. Uh, there's a lot of interest, and obviously businesses are interested in looking for a new product to mm -hmm. sell. Mm -hmm. And esports probably, at the, even at the moment, ranks about sixth or seventh as popularity as a betting product. Uh, it's, it's still in its infancy. There are concerns that the people who play these games are quite young mm -hmm. and with most of the operators concerned about social responsibility, they don't really want to be selling a product uh, that would entice the young to gamble. But uh, the idea of bringing them into Las Vegas in the casino where uh, everything can be supervised and in arenas? It's a good idea, yeah. And in actual fact, uh, you know, back home, Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, mm -hmm. uh, they're building a new stadium in London and they're having an eSports arena in the stadium, you know. So people obviously feel that this is the growth. You wouldn't spend all that money if you didn't feel there was future growth. What's it like for you? Were you have you been the head of an association? Yeah, I was chairman of the uh, Association of British Bookmakers for 10 years. What's it like coming to Las Vegas and seeing huge billboards alongside where it says uh, uh, Penn and & Teller and, and the next billboard says uh, uh, William Hill Sportsbook? Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? You know, it's, uh, it's nice. It's not, I, I always feel quite proud when I see British products on sale abroad. And it's, uh, whether it's a Bentley or an Aston Martin, uh, you know, and there you have William Hill on the strip. <laughs>